are talking the Throne of Fire. This is a 1983 sword and sandal movie uh, directed by Francesco Propressi. And this one stars the B-movie goddess Sabrina Ciani and uh, Pietro Torisi, also known as Peter McCoy, who was an Italian bodybuilder who did a number of kind of like uh, fantasy and sort of sword and sorcery movies. So the plot of this one is a, a kind of a guy who is the product of demonic birth essentially a demon impregnates a woman makes this kind of uh, this guy and he he feels he is destined to rule this land and he kills the the former king but to rule properly he has to uh, legitimately be uh able to sit on this particular throne which is magic that burns anyone that isn't actually a legitimate heir to the throne so he has to try and get the uh, the daughter of the Slade King, played by Sir Sabrina Siani, uh, and marry her uh, to be able to legitimately rule the kingdom. And he has to do it by a certain kind of period of time. And then we have Siegfried, who is a kind of his counterpart, a noble barbarian who is on a quest to uh, save the princess and defeat the evil guy and his armies and all that good stuff. Uh, so... The Italians loved the sword and sorcery genre in the kind of the early 80s on the back of obviously the Conan films. And, uh, you know, there's a whole host of them. We've, re we've reviewed a couple of them here on the channel. I'll have to go and check them out. Uh, this one I actually had on VHS. It's, it was I actually quite enjoyed this one in, in a certain way. It has a certain amount of cheesy fun. Uh, there are a few things. I mean, you have to kind of look at these movies for the time that they're in and the budget that they're in. And I know it's very easy to kind of look at these things, things in an ironic lens these days. And we've seen there's plenty of channels that kind of just like to, oh, look at this funny 80s movie. I'm not going to do that. That's not how I operate here. I'm going to look at it as legitimately, can you enjoy this for the film that it was made to be? Uh, and in some respects, yes. Uh, and then we'll talk about what doesn't work as well. But what I did like, I do think this has got quite a rousing adventure. And um, it's, it's, it's actually better than a couple of the other ones I have watched and reviewed recently. I've recently reviewed the second Ator movie in Seven Magnificent Gladiators. And I would say this is definitely better than those films. It has a little bit more plot to it. Uh, I feel the, the bad guy is um, legitimately more of an evil bad guy here. Uh, and he is actually relatively smart. Um, he, he does things that I think are a bit more strategic than just kind of like being a blundering idiot without any kind of real uh, elements of plot. The bad guy is actually somewhat kind of uh, um, plans things and is able to, ex you know, do things with, without just reacting to stuff, which I thought was quite good. Um, I quite like the kind of the costuming in this movie as well. Our bad, bad guys... Uh, kind of soldiers if you like have quite a cool armor they almost look a little bit kind of futuristic in a way but you know cool looking kind of fantasy armor that was quite good there's a really decent scene i think where and again we've got to look at this through the, the, the low budget italian 80s lens i will i will say that our hero siegfried gets thrown into the i think it's the well of sorrow or something like that and um, he's ultimately, the Well of Madness, I think it's called, and he's ultimately confronted with a bunch of kind of like trippy horror imagery and things like that where he has to fight a ghost knight and there's snakes and things down there. It's a fun sequence, I have to say, and uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a nice little fun cheesy effect where a floating uh, head comes and talks to him and things like that. Yeah, it doesn't look very good, but it's just fun. Um, I really like Sabrina Sayani. She's one of the kind of like the, uh, I think more, doesn't really get talked about a lot these days. She's a little bit underrated and forgotten about in, in these days. But I was, I was a little bit of a fan uh, back in the uh, back in the olden days of VHS, and um, I had a few of her films. She she has done a couple of uh, um, sword and sorcery films, um, and I'm a big fan of this this, this genre. If you know uh, what's this channel at all. And she's in this quite. She does quite a lot of screen time, and there's some there's some relatively kind of kind of well staged action sequences as well. And I've got to say, um, Siegfried, you know, he he makes for a kind of a, a reasonable Conan substitute here, uh, played by you know quote unquote Peter McCoy. Well, that was his screen name, obviously, not not really his uh, his actual name there. But uh, nonetheless, you know, I think he's a little bit more likeable than, than some we've had in these kind of roles. What doesn't work? Yeah, okay. 
it's a cheesy 80s uh, sword and sorcery movie that is, you could poke holes at to your heart's content. Um, the plot really involves Siegfried getting captured and escaping time after time. In fact, it happens three times. He gets captured and escapes three times. You're thinking, why doesn't, why doesn't the bad guy just kill him? Now, there is a reason, because uh, Siegfried knows uh, the, a prophecy, which is why he's kept alive. But, again, it's just like you feel... They didn't really, didn't really need to be captured three times. I mean, it's just kind of like uh, a little bit too much, to be honest with you. There are a little bit of a gore, there are a little bit of gore effects here, although I think they could have done a little bit more with it, to be honest. It doesn't kind of go, uh, you know, it would have maybe had it gone leaned into that a little more and had it been a little more adult. I think it would have been to its benefit to have a little more kind of gore effects and things like that. Uh, <clears throat> the effects that we do have. Obviously, are kind of super sort of cheesy and, and cheap. Uh, the sets kind of look wobbly. The effects kind of have really dated pretty badly by today's sort of standards. And you know, uh, it's it's just the kind of like has lots of the the, the, kind of the typical cheesy dialogue, the horrible music score that you could have you get in a lot of these movies. And ultimately, is a, quite a quickly made film. And that is obviously clear to see, you know, something that was knocked out relatively quickly. But I will say, I think that, you know, I think this looks like they, they were they were invested in the movie that, that, that we had. I mean, some of these movies today, for example, even ones that are knocked out quickly, I feel that's just knocked out uh, without any care. And I, I, I have to say, as much as, and as cheesy as these films are, these kind of like these 80s films, you do feel like they are... They, they they love it. They think it's a great movie at the time. They kind of think they're enjoying making it and and taking it kind of seriously. This isn't kind of played for camp. I quite like the bad guy, um, and you know the, the action was was a little better, not great, but a little better than some of the uh, some of the other films that we've kind of we've talked about. Realistically, I can't say this as a good film, but I do think it's a better example of Italian sword and sorcery movies than some. Um, in the context of that, I'll give this one a 5 out of 10 because I did enjoy this movie. It, you know, it gets a little plodding because we are feel like, we do feel like we're kind of rinsing and repeating the same plot points. As I say, Siegfried is, catches and escapes three times in a row. It, it didn't need to do it. It could have done something else. But I kind of like the... Um, Obviously, the Italian kind of like set locations and things like that. And I've got to say, I thought the costuming and, and the kind of like the when we do have that sets, like the kind of like I say the, the well of madness, it looks fun. I enjoyed it. So I will give this one a five out of ten. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.